Hey, I'm Spencer and I'm a photographer and filmmaker in Columbus, Ohio. And this is the first video in Midwest Photos Quasar Science video series. Now this first video is going to serve mostly as an overview of their product lineup. Uh, I'm gonna talk in detail about the differences between each one and hopefully it'll help you pick which one is right for you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The T8 offboard dimming lamps are Quasar Science's entry level light, so to speak. They come in two different color temperatures, either 5600 Kelvin daylight or 3000 Kelvin tungsten balance, and come in either a two foot or four foot length. Now, as the name would suggest, these don't have any sort of dimmer on board, so when you plug them in, they're at full strength and that's how they stay, unless you plug a dimmer into the power supply somehow. Um, now, as far as the power draw goes, they only draw uh, 30 watts for the four foot version and 15 watts for the two foot version. So you don't need any uh, high power dimmer at all to dim them. So it's really easy uh, to attach that if you'd like. And they are flicker free as well as you dim them, which is a really nice feature. As far as plugging them in and powering them at all, they do have a little two prong connector on the end of the light that you'll basically plug the uh, adapter cable into, and then that gives you about a foot of cable before you get to a more standard two prong uh, wall socket style sort of plug that you can go straight into a stinger or a battery pack or however you'd like to power them from there. Uh, so you have a lot of options with how you can use these and coming in at about $50 for the two foot tube and $80 for the four foot tube, they're really affordable and like I said, just a good way to kind of get into the ecosystem and try these things out if they are something that's new to you. The next light in their lineup is the crossfade tube and crossfade refers to what's basically bicolor uh, functionality. Anyone that's used a bicolor light recently knows just how great of a feature it is being able to adjust color temperature very quickly and easily without wasting time having to gel lights while on set. Um, there's just a little dial on the end of the tube that lets you go from 2000 Kelvin to 6000 Kelvin very quickly and easily and it adds tons of flexibility to this light. And it's one of the reasons that I like the crossfades so much. They are a little bit brighter as well. The two foot tube draws about 25 watts and the four foot tube draws about 50 watts. So if extra output is something that you'd be interested in, I think the crossfade tube is a great way to go as well. And they do also come in more sizes. If you want, you can get a one foot, two foot, four foot, six foot, or eight foot size of these, depending on the space constraints that you have, the output that you need, or the coverage that you need. And I think that's another great feature of these as well. They are a little bit more expensive because of all of these different things. The one foot tube is about $125 and the eight foot tube is about $475 as of this recording. But if that uh, bicolor functionality or extra brightness is something you think you would need, I highly recommend going this route. Uh, they are a very flexible light and I use these probably more than any other Quasar tube. The next light in their lineup is the rainbow tube. And this is the one that most people know. It's definitely their most unique light. Uh, the big standout feature on this is the digital interface. Uh, like most other lights on the market today, these actually have a screen and buttons that you can control it with. You can use this interface to dim the lamp, change the color temperature, uh, or you can use the hue and saturation tools to create just about any color that you can think of. Uh, super versatile light because of that uh, and just makes it function uh, just a little bit more like stuff that most people are used to. Another feature that's uh, sort of hidden away into this is what Quasar calls invisible green. Uh, basically, as you shift from a warmer color temperature to a cooler color temperature, it uses uh, invisible green to add a little bit of green to counteract any magenta shift. And basically what it means is no matter what color temperature you set this light to, it maintains a nice, perfect white. And it's just kind of a cool standout feature that a lot of other lights don't have. Uh, and again, just saves time uh, from having to use any magenta or green gels on set to perfectly balance the light. It's a great feature. Like the crossfade lights, the two foot tube draws about 25 watts. The four foot draws about 50 watts. So the same power draw. 
They have a different power connector. It is a proprietary plug that just plugs right into the light. It has a twist lock, but with this, you have about three feet of cable to go into a grounded socket uh, before you have to break out a stinger or a battery pack or something like that. So a little bit easier to work with on set because of that, something I definitely appreciate. Um, basically, these lights are going to be about the same output as the crossfade lights. The big thing with these is gonna be the fact that you have all the different color tools within them that uh, differentiate them from the crossfade light. Otherwise they're, for white light, so to speak, they're gonna be about the same. And I'll jump into specifically what the rainbows can do in a separate video. So be sure to keep an eye out on that if these are something that you're interested in. The last light in their lineup that I'm gonna talk about is the Q Lion lamp. It's a battery powered quasar. It's the only one with a battery built in and it still maintains some of the features of the other lights that people love. It is bicolor. There is a button on the end of the light uh, just under the battery gauge. And if you hold that down, you can switch from either 3000 Kelvin tungsten to 5600 Kelvin daylight. Uh, and if you just press the button in several different increments, you can dim the light from 100% to 0%. So uh, you have total control over the light without having to plug anything external into it. And there are even magnets on the back to attach it to different surfaces pretty easily. If you're going to attach it to something that's not magnetized, uh, you can use gaff tape pretty easily. It's very lightweight. Uh, but this light basically just lets you get a tube into places that would otherwise be very difficult to mount because there are no cables to worry about, no other control interfaces or anything like that. It's totally self-sufficient, uh, and I do have one myself. It's great, really versatile for those hard to reach spots. There are three different sizes for this, a seven inch, a one foot, and a two foot, and those come in at $100, $200, and $300, respectively, as of this recording. The first thing that most people notice about Quasar lights is that there's no mounting device directly attached to any of them. The great part about this is that you can use a variety of different methods to attach them to almost anything. There are four main methods that I use that I'm gonna talk about here. The first of which is the Quasar plate. Um, this is basically a metal plate that's got four clips on the front and a baby pin that you can put in any one of four spots to orient the lights either vertically or horizontally, depending on what you need. Uh, and you can use this for any of the Quasar Science lights except for the Q Lion tube. So whether you have the T8s, the crossfades, or the rainbows, this will work and let you attach them directly to a C-stand just like any other light. Uh, it's probably the one I use the most. The next one would be the Mafer clamp. This is what I used when I started using Quasar lights just because I had a ton of these lying around and most sets uh, and grip trucks have tons of these as well. These just go right onto a light stand or a grip arm or a boom arm and you can just gently tighten down the clamp to hold one tube. Only downside of the Mafer clamp is that if you tighten it too much, you do run the risk of accidentally crushing the tube. So you just have to keep an eye out. Uh, remedying that is the MQ clamp. This only fits the crossfade and the rainbow tubes as they are a thicker tube. It's the T12 size as opposed to the T8 size of the T8 tubes. Uh, but if you put the crossfade or rainbow tube into this and tighten it down, you'll see that basically it will tighten down enough to firmly grasp the tube, but it will not crush it. So this is probably the best way to mount uh, just one tube to any given thing. Uh, the Mafer, like I said, they're just so ubiquitous that it's just kind of easy because there's almost always one within arm's reach, but the MQ is one that I would really recommend, especially just for the safety and longevity of the light uh, because the Mafer clamps can actually apply a ton of pressure if you're not careful. The fourth one is one that I have a few caveats with and that is gaff tape. Uh, the big thing with this is that you can use it to put Quasar lights absolutely anywhere. Uh, walls, ceilings, floors, it's very secure and it's pretty strong stuff. Uh, the only thing to keep an eye out for is safety uh, because gaff tape does not have any sort of threading or clamping or anything that lets you know that it's on there super super tight you want to be very sure that you've double or triple taped things on so that you don't hurt anyone these don't fall off anything like that it's a very versatile method but should be used sparingly and in my opinion it's kind of a last resort the other thing is you also want to make sure that you have permission from your location to use gaff tape 
that's not specific to the quasars and the safety thing isn't specific to the quasars either. It's just that anytime you're attaching something to something else with gaff tape, you wanna make sure that it's on there nice and tight. But if you're in a pinch, this is really a great way to get lights into a really hard to reach spot that is typically impossible to do otherwise. Uh, I use this with the T8 tubes, the Q Lion tubes a lot because they're so lightweight. Um, it's just, you know, Again, something that's always on set, something that's always within arm's reach and can be a solution uh, if you're really in a pinch. So that's my overview of the Quasar Science product range. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and hopefully it makes choosing which Quasar to use for your next project a little bit easier. Be sure to check out our next video, which is gonna be the real world application of the T8 Crossfade and Q Lion tubes, just showing some of the unique stuff that you can do with those in the real world. I really appreciate everyone watching and I'll see you next time.